Princess Leia hairdo on? Check. Hey everybody, welcome to lecture three. MS20 SQ1 integration is what this lecture will be about. But before I start, I wanna make a quick comment about uh, novel coronavirus and COVID-19. As of this recording, we've lost 156,000 souls on this planet. And you might say, well, on a planet of 7.6 billion people, how impactful is that? Well, the thing is, it's happening, as we know, in hot spots. Hot spots like Wuhan, China, Bergamo, Italy, New York City, Detroit. And it isn't just the entire cities either. It's neighborhoods in these cities. And losing 156,000 people on a neighborhood by neighborhood level, that's impactful, right? And in a cruel twist, the people that are dying are dying alone, isolated from friends and family. Look, if you're healthy, please do what you can to stay healthy and also help others stay healthy. If you're a healthcare provider, if you're a first responder, if you're one of the millions of people helping keep our society running, Thank you. Thank you so very much. And if you've lost someone to COVID-19, a friend, family members, um, my condolences, and you're in my thoughts. But that's not why you're here. That's not why you found this video. Uh, you keyword searched core, get MS20, SQ1. And that's what this lecture is going to be about. I've been seeing a number of posts looking at how a Korg MS-20 that we know can rip through a mix, right? Nothing like a Korg MS-20 can pierce a mix. But can, the question is, can a Korg MS-20 actually act more like an ambient synthesizer, have an ethereal quality to it? And so I've put together what I'm calling an automatic ambient engine. And I want this automatic ambient engine to do a few things. Right, I want it to drive the voltage control oscillators with a couple of modals. I'm going to use the SQ1 to trigger gates, not only the keyboard gates, but also uh, envelope generator one gate. And then I'm going to use EG1 uh, with these modals to help modulate the high pass and low pass filters. And with that, I'm going to patch in a mod wheel. We're going to attempt here to tame the savage beast. We're going to attempt to be the Tiger King of the MS-20. So if you'll recall from lecture two, I talked about good notes. In fact, stop the video, get a screen grab here, and this will give you my setup. I've got all my patches. I'm calling this the auto ambient engine. It's a pad. I got some notes here about what it's doing, the dates, all that stuff, right? So with this setup, I have two different control strategies. One half is coming from the SQ1. The other half is pretty much all MS-20. So the SQ1 control strategy, using A and B as well as the gates, are going to be controlling the keyboard and EG1 trigger. Keyboard, EG1 trigger with the voltage control os oscillators. MS-20 side, I'll be dealing with the voltage control amplifier too, and modulation using EG1 and the mod wheel. And I'll go through all of this in great detail here in a moment. Okay, that's the flight plan. But as usual with these lectures, a little theory first. We want to convert our musical desires into control voltage. And that's what's up next. The well, first step here is to program the SQ1 sequence A and sequence B for the output voltage for the voltage control oscillators. We know the SQ1 bass lines in the key of C. So I'm going to use voltage block scales based in the key of C. And I'm going to choose this Phrygian scale. And I like the Phrygian scale because it works really, really well with open C on a guitar. So taking the Phrygian scale and generating two modals from that, modal A and modal B, and those will be run on the SQ1, sequence A and sequence B, and those are voltage outputs from the SQ1. right? And I look at my MS-20, and I compare it to my Alesis, such that when I hit a key on the Alesis, right, it has the same sort of tonal quality as the MS-20. And I recognize that each successive note that's generated by a voltage from the SQ-1 
uh, looking at what the output voltage is that controls the MS20 so that a C2 at the 8 foot range, uh, VCO1 on the MS20, chromatic scale output from the SQ1, 8 volt range, gives me a voltage out of the SQ1 of about 1 volt, and that is a C2 key on both the Korg MS20 and my Alesis. Then each successive voltage output from the SQ1 is a successive note, running all the way from C2 to C5, 3 octaves. Now again, we look at our Friesian scale, right? That's the chord progression in C we're going to generate modals from. That's what we picked earlier because it worked really well with open C on a guitar. And then I take these two modals, these two notes from my A modal and these five notes from my B modal and associate those notes with voltages. So on my A modal, I'll be running from between A and E flat. And on my B modal, from B flat up to G3, I'll be syncopating those, these voltages from the SQ1 to generate something that looks along these lines. And together, they generate my modal. Okay, let's talk a little bit about programming the SQ1 with our control voltage requirements. All right, so from lecture two, I had that fancy chord I made, not so fancy, my digital multimeter, right? I'll need that a step as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the SQ1 on. I'm gonna put an active step. I'm going to turn, then turn things off I don't care about. I'm going to check and do each one of these at one time. So I'm going to work on bank A, pot A, which would be the first note, the musical measure. I'm going to get my chord connected in. My DMM magically appears. <laughs> get that turned on, and then I can take the very first pot and adjust it. Follow lecture two for all the details in this. The bottom line here is, Go ahead, get yourself a DMM, make this chart, and you'll be able to then easily program with voltage. Hi, folks. Well, we're almost halfway through with this lecture. Only halfway? Yes, yes. My students complain about how long my lectures are, so now you can too. Look, we're about to begin the patching portion of the lecture. And before I begin the patching portion, that's patching up the MS-20 with the SQ-1, please grab a pair of headphones. I want you to be able to hear the tonal differences as we begin to patch the MS-20, and then from that, looking at after-processing effects. Those are key components of the lecture. So again, grab yourself a pair of headphones, buckle up, and let's spank this puppy home. Tools for this step. Patch map. Eight patch cords and a splitter. These little eighth inch stereo splitters, super helpful tool for the MS-20. All right, we've got our SQ-1 running. Let's get us on active step just for grins. And let's begin. First CVA out is gonna go into VCO1. Goes into one and two, but we're gonna run one with it. And we're also gonna then get our gate going here. Gate A out into keyboard trigger in. Up oh, there we go, she springs to life. You can really hear envelope generator 2 modulating that VCO1. Alright, voltage control B into VCO2. Oh, here she comes. Alright, next up, gate B out into EG1 trigger in. Yeah, we definitely hear that EG1 working now. So that takes care of our SQ1 control. That was the first half of the setup. Now, next piece was mod wheel. So let's get our wheel into our VCA. That's what we'll be controlling our voltage control amplifier out with. And VCA out is gonna go into the low pass filter. All right, we're hearing something going down there, but not exactly what we want just yet. Go ahead and get our doubler in. Now I'm going to put that into the reverse out for our envelope generator one. And it's going to go directly into our high pass filter and control our input voltage ooh, for the voltage control amplifier too. And now let's mess with the mod wheel a little bit. Oh, yeah, 
that's the sound we're looking for right there. That's the sound we're looking for. And you can hear too that there's nice harmonics coming out of the SQ-1. And if I've done my Phrygian scale correctly on the SQ-1, I can actually turn some of these off and change the chord progression. There it is. <laughs> That's the idea, right? As you can turn these on and off, if done properly, if you chose your voltages and your notes properly, you can play with the chord progressions the SQ1's putting out. Gosh, it's almost polyphonic. At least we could call it a duophonic setup. Let's toss some Ableton effects at it and give it some real nice ethereal qualities. Oh yeah, that's coming together. All right, before we move on, I want you to stop and get a screen grab of this. This is the other half of the MS-20, the knob twiddle half, right? So you've had the patch cord side, we went through that in grave detail. But I also wanna make sure you have the left hand side as well, all the knob settings so you can directly duplicate what I just went through. All right, so with that, let's have some fun. Thank you. 
All right, you made it to the end. Lecture three, automatic ambient engine, MS20 SQ1. Look, if you are a professional expert MS20 SQ1 user, you probably found this video, oh, I don't know, elementary, right? Early on, you did a screen grab of that my worksheet showing my patches, and off you went. Hey, look, there's no midterm, there's no final, there's no test questions, there's no ramifications. I am totally cool with that. Off and run, plagiarism is the highest form of flattery. Well, not at a public university, so don't try it there. If you are an MS20 SQ1 user, but still learning, I hope you found this video evolutionary, right? This idea of a voltage block in the base of C, right? Chord progressions being converted into voltage. Actually taking a DMM and mapping your output voltage from your SQ1 for your MS20. All of these things talk to converting modals into voltage. We call this workflow, at least I call it workflow. So hopefully the ideas I've brought to you are evolutionary in terms of your workflow. Now, if you're a newbie SQ and MS20, MS20 user, I'm gonna bet it was revolutionary. I hope I blew your, blew your mind, right? I wanna set your wheels in motion. The whole idea of the tactile sense and feel you know, here I am playing with a mod wheel to get that thing sounding just right. That's what makes the MS-20 such a phenomenal synthesizer. And I hope you found this video way cool. Now, up pops my YouTube channel, super easy to find, H-A apostrophe D-L-B-A-H space YouTube, and I'll be the first hit in your search engine. You'll know you landed on the right spot because you'll have that green background of my Macintosh computer zoomed in on the IMW, IWN, Integrated, Integrated WAS Machine. Let's get that right, the IWM, Integrated WAS Machine. All right, there you'll find other lectures, lecture two, where I show you how to actually set up the SQ1 with your DMM, how to make your DIY cord, things like that. So critical components that were building blocks for lecture three, other lecture one, which was eh, but it, it's there. It's not bad. I have some music, some other things. Hopefully you'll find them interesting. Please uh, visit my website, maybe even be a subscriber. The next time I put a video out like this, you'll be one of the first ones to get it. Also, if you have any questions, any at all, I mean, obviously <laughs> regarding the subject, uh, please send me a comment and I will be happy to answer any questions you might have. All right. I hope I was inspirational. And I'll talk to you later.